Good evening. This is the June meeting of the Burlington Planning and Zoning Commission. We are an appointed advisory board consisting of five city residents who are appointed by the Burlington City Council and two extraterritorial members who are appointed by the county commissioners. This board makes its recommendations to the Burlington City Council. At this time, if you have a uh, cell phone or electronic equipment, if you would mute it, silence it, much appreciated. Um, be advised that this meeting is being recorded. Uh, as a point of order, if you're called on or if you want to speak, you come to the podium. Please state your name and your address for the record so that we can get that down. Um, public comments are limited to three minutes. If we could have a roll call of the commission, please. Sure. Uh, Chairman Black. Here. Vice Chair Kirkpatrick is currently absent. Member Beasley. Here. Member Parker. Here. Member Brown. Here. Member Campbell is absent. Member Hill is absent. Member Wright is absent. Uh, member, is that Nelson? Here. And Member Rayner. Present. And we have a quorum. Thank you. Um, before we begin, I would ask if all the commissioners have reviewed the, the agenda. Does anyone have a uh, problem or a conflict of interest? If so, state it now. Thank you. Then we'll go to the agenda, item number two, approval of the minutes that were held on meetings April 22nd and May 20th. So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Item number three, rezoning. 24006, Mr. Dave Chima, applicant to present a request to rezone property from neighborhood business to general business limited use. <coughs> the property is located on the northeast corner of the intersection of South Mevin Street and Chapel Hill Road, addressed as 506 Chapel Hill Road and consisting of Alamance County tax identification <coughs> number one two 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 eight six mr chima home address please 3116 Brook Valley Court, Mevin, North Carolina. Um, yeah, so just like the application says, we're a gas station slash convenience store called Dave's Mini Mart, located at the corner of Chapel Hill Road and Devon Street here in Burlington. If you guys have ever been to City Park, you might have stopped in for a Gatorade or maybe to fill your tank up or something like that. Uh, we've been in business there. I worked with my father, and we've been in business since 2005. That's when we took over there. Obviously, I wasn't that involved then on the account. I was seven years old. So, um, but since graduating college, I came back and started working with my dad. In recent years, I would say that when we first started, it was pretty obvious. It was um, more normal to see a gas station that may have a manual sign where, like, if you had to change the gas prices, you would go out there and physically change the numbers. In recent years, most of them have transitioned to digital signs, and we feel that it's our next step and in the best interest of our business as well as i feel like in the best interest of the look of the area i think it would look better with the digital side and not as dated i would say so yeah we're trying to do that and in order to do that we need to be rezoned to a general business because it is not we're not able to apply for that sign as a neighborhood business does anyone on the commission have a question for mr chima Mr. Park. Uh, is this all that you want to do is just change your sign? Yeah. Okay. Hmm? Any other questions from you? Does anyone on this side of the room have any questions or they want to make any comments about this? 
Thank you, Mr. Chief. If you'll sit. use rezoning request the applicant has requested two uses one a car wash and automobile detailing or convenience store with gasoline sales um, that's like two uses out of the 114 I mean right. and that's what they currently do and and that's fine and of course if they sell then you know we have no control later down the road but for what Mr. Chima is um, understanding the only reason they're asking for this is so they're able to put in a digital sign yeah if i mean we have no intention of changing okay <clears throat> are you are you satisfied with that? yes does anyone on this side have anything to ask or say no mr chairman in your example that you just gave the the conditions the two purposes would still apply would they not even if they sold the lot oh sure absolutely and, and they'd be limited to those two absolutely okay, okay. i'll ask if there are any other questions or any comments from the commission uh could we have the staff's recommendation please yes so staff is recommending the rezoning request um, with option two provided in your packet in the consistency um, sheet the entire area not just this property um, is located within the traditional residential future mm -hmm. land use designation so it is inconsistent with with that um, however we we feel that there is no no issue relative to the rezoning request. It falls in line with exactly the same purpose of the uses that are occurring currently. Thank you. That being said, if there are no other questions from the commission, I will entertain a motion. I'll make a motion. <clears throat> motion uh, to approve, inconsistent with LUP, amend LUP. I make a motion to recommend approval of the request to rezone property from neighborhood business to general business, limited use. The property is located on the northeast corner of the intersection of South Meadow Street and Chapel Hill Road, addressed as 506 Chapel Hill Road, and consisting of Alamance County Tax Identification Number 122286. While the request is inconsistent with the future land use map in Section 4, land use of the comprehensive plan, and that it calls for this area to be traditional residential. The current zoning of the property is incompatible with future land use designation of the site. The request does not change the number of allowable uses on the property or affect the existing commercial use on the site. This action is reasonable and the public interest in that. The comprehensive plan encourages a sustainable balance of land uses. The request is compatible with the existing zoning and land use on the site. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Roll call of the vote, please. Chair Black. 
Aye. Member Beasley? Approve. Member Parker? Approve. Member Brown? Aye. Member Nelson? Approve. Member Rayner? Approve. Okay. Mr. Chimney, you'll be notified by a letter as to when the council will act on this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Item number four, rezoning 24-005. Ms. Caitlin, Caitlin Jackson, applicant to present a request to rezone property from agricultural to medium industrial limited use. The assembly of properties being located on the west side of Highway 61 in Guilford County, just south of the Guilford McIntosh Park and west of Homeview Road and consisting of Guilford County Tax ID numbers 106949, 106961, 106966, 106967, 106968, 106970, 106973, 106976, 106997, 225491, and 225492. Ms. Jackson. Huh? I think Mr. Duggins is going to speak about it. Ms. Jackson's right beside me here. I'm Nathan Duggins, 400 Bellamy in Greensboro. I'm an attorney of Pueblo Duggins representing Ian Phillips, is sitting here on my left, who y'all were introduced to last month when we were before. Uh, the same board. The reason we're before you again is because we've added 23 members to the application. So in concert and uh, with the assistance of uh, the planning staff, we've put the matter back in front of you. I uh, want to introduce you to a couple more people who are here tonight. I will tell you a little bit more about what's happened since we uh, were before you last month. Uh, the claps are here. Can y'all raise your hands? Claps are the, uh, some landowners that um, are part of the application. The Willits are here. Um, and then uh, the Wades are not here, but the Wades are the property owners. And it's highlighted there on the screen that yellow section is the section that we're, we're adding. Um, the board may remember when we were before you before that we had had a neighborhood meeting uh, back on May 15th, which was of course before the first board meeting. Uh, we had 13 people attend that meeting. Lots of questions about water and sewer. Y'all remember? Y'all may remember us talking about that before y'all last time. Uh, estimated time of construction, types of impacts, traffic was discussed, that kind of thing. Um, and um, uh, and of course we were before the board and it was uh, recommended uh, to the city council at that meeting. Since that time, we've had a second uh, meeting that we conducted last uh, Tuesday, which I think was June 18th. Uh, that meeting primarily focused on the low house, which is the house that sits to the north of this site. It's a preserved house, um, and the Rainers own that house. And I don't see the Rainers here tonight, but um, they were here before, if y'all remember the Rainers. Uh, and they were concerned um, about the buffering and impact to their site. Um, and so we've talked, and, had, and I know staff has had a number of conversations with Kathleen Turner, who works for Preservation North Carolina. Uh, and she was concerned and is concerned about buffering, burning. One of the topics we had in our neighborhood meeting, I'm gonna to try to explain this, but if you go to the far east corner of that site, there's a, yeah, right there. Um, there's a gravel road that is that runs basically in between those properties. And they were concerned about whether or not an industrial development as, as proposed um, by our client would impact that road. And the answer is it would not impact that road. Um, so we talked through that. They asked about berming on the north side. Um, and they also asked, asked about where the access point would be along the frontage on 61. Uh, and of course, uh, this is a NCDOT highway, and NCDOT will govern that. We would anticipate it would be somewhere in the middle of the site between the yellow parcel and the corner there. Uh, and uh, we talked through that with Mrs. Turner. And Mr. Rayner was on that call too. He, was, he, he had his wife on that call. Um, so that's, that's where we're sitting today. The applicant is asking to um, again seek a recommendation for not just the original 173 acres, 
but to add the 23 acres there to the south. He's here if y'all have questions. I know there may be some other folks who want to speak, and it might be easier for them to speak, and then we can get up and uh, address their questions if they have any. Thank you. Um, we were made aware of an email sent by uh, Kathleen Turner, Regional Director, Preservation North Carolina. I assume you received the same. Yes, sir. Email. Um, Jamie, would you go over how this letter really doesn't impact, if you would, please? Sure. <clears throat> so as a reminder uh, to the board members and also to the public, um, their applicant's request is a limited use rezoning request, which means um, that they have specified particular uses uh, as part of their application. And, um, and, and certain uses are not included. However, that's just related to the use. Um, as a reminder, the Planning and Zoning Commission is an advisory board. Uh, it is your duty to make a recommendation or not in favor of the rezoning request. So the council ultimately makes the, um, the call in terms of whether or not the rezoning is approved or denied. Um, however, you are not able to impose your um, conditions associated with um, applications in, in this matter. Um, there are other types of rezonings that potentially uh, could impose conditions. However, as part of this request, you are not. So um, staff provided you with the, the email and the information uh, from uh, Ms. Turner as uh, informational. Um, and the applicant may be able to answer some questions associated with it, may not, um, but it is not something that you could impose conditions as a result of your recommendation or not um, for this matter. Thank okay. you. That being said, you did receive a copy of this. Yes, sir. Were there uh, any problems that you foresaw with their recommendations? Consistent with the conversations that we had last Tuesday with Mrs. Turner, um, there were a handful, uh, there were some things we could definitely do, right? There were some things that we just at this moment can't commit to um, because we don't know exactly who the user will be and how they will set up on, on the site. Um, one, of the, um, one of the concerns that, um, that Mrs. Turner raised was a buffer. She wanted a buffer uh, from the house to the property line. And um, it was interesting. We actually pulled the, this is the application that was submitted for the property back in 1986. Um, and one of the concerns about, in this application that was submitted that was ultimately approved was providing a rural setting for the house. And they actually ended up adding some acreage that surrounded the house. Uh, the original application was for about an acre and they increased that to about 1.6 acres. And I'm just gonna read uh, to the board. It says, the new site will include the house site and 1.6 acres surrounding it, retaining a wide yard buffer to preserve its rural setting. We've also measured from the house to uh, basically the other side of the road, plus the buffer that will be required by your LDF, by the UDA, the, the, mm -hmm. the, which will be a whole other process as the board knows when the site is planned. Uh, is submitted, um, and it would be a minimum of 200 feet from the, from the from the house to any kind of development on the site. Um, committing to a borough might be difficult because we don't know exactly what the site's going to look like. That was a suggestion um, that Mrs. Turner had. Uh, I've already mentioned the location of the access point, so I think that's something we can certainly work with. So I think, generally speaking. We've got some flexibility, but need to retain some flexibility as we go through the site, uh, site plan process. Thank you. Does any commission member have any questions at this time, Mr. Parker? Uh, I, I may have missed it. How many acres total is this? Yes, sir. It's 196 acres total. And when we came through before, it was 173 acres, I think, was the total. So okay. We added roughly 23 acres. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, Mr. Parker, I'm 
Mr. Chairman, I'm trying to figure the math. The chart or, or the slide says the new parcel is 11 acres, but I thought I understood the uh, developer to say that it was 23. It's, it's 20. It's a total of 23 acres. It's 11 tracks. 11, yeah, it's 11 tracks. Tracks. 23 acres. Parcels. Yeah, I'm sorry. Well, Oh, oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see that now. Yeah. Okay. Property in yellow is the Wayne property, is that correct? Correct. Okay. That mm -hmm. was just recently added? Yeah, added since our last board meeting, yes, sir. Any other commissioners have any questions at this time? Staff yeah, question. Uh, the addition of the extra acreage doesn't change the percentage of pervious versus impervious surface or the watershed protection drain salt. All right. Any others? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Does anyone on this side of the room wish to speak or ask for a microphone, Jones? My name is Jerry Nix. My home address is 439 Brightwood Church Road, Gibsonville. I am a board member of the Gilbert County Historic Preservation Commission have also served as his past chairman and vice chair in years past. Our commission has, a, has 107 designated properties that we have uh, looked after for the years, and the Lyle House is one of these properties. It's an 1820 federal style brick house. It's a very important landmark for Gilbert County. Uh, it was built by a German Lutheran. Uh, it is one of 12 brick structures built before 1840 that's still standing in the county. And it has the finest federal interior architecture in all of Gilbert County. Many people don't realize that when this house and the property it was sitting on belonged to the city of Burlington. It was on the National Register of Historic Places and still is. In order to have Lake McIntosh to be built, the property had to be moved. And with the owner and preservation of North Carolina, this property was moved 1,000 feet west so that the house could be saved. It could not go north. It could not uh, because of the bridge there and going south there was another bridge. And the cost was prohibited. But with the action of the city of Burlington, at Preservation of Carolina and doing this, was, this landmark was saved. Now, 39 years later, things have changed. Coming from an agricultural district to a uh, rezoned property that um, we don't know what's coming in yet. The, but that's not the problem. The problem is, is to try to preserve the Lyle House so it still has this agricultural feel, feel to it. And what has been asked was, was about the berms and the high density vegetation placed around it and moving, or have no road to go up close to it. This, he just uh, discussed about where the road should go and so forth. And these are all things that's in discussion. And it, we're not asking that much when it comes down to it. I know it's hard when you don't have a buyer to know what's going to go in there about where to place stuff. So that's why we're asking that these things be taken into consideration and including light. I know in Guilford County, some of the problems we had, they put these new lights in and they would just shine everywhere. And you have to think it's 24 hours a day light. And uh, so all this had to change. I had the same thing in Whitson with the uh, storage buildings that was there. And it had to be changed to it. So, is that my time? Yes, finish your finish your sentence. And but uh, Kathleen Turner has been talking to the Crown uh, companies, talking about these same berms and other items that we're trying to have. I just want everybody to know that this property exists. So many years have passed that nobody even knows the house is there for them. And we're just we're not wanting to impose anything that's not really viable for this piece of property. And uh, so I asked your uh, 
recommendation on this is to help make sure that these things and conditions are passed along. Thank you, Mr. Nix. Where exactly <coughs> is this house on this chart? What do you know when you just go across the bridge? Yeah. It's on the right, that last bridge just before the rock quarry that's on the left. I see it. Yeah. It's it's like that you start that area. area. Yeah. So there's a uh, gravel road that comes along where this red line is. So it's the smallest property there, that little one? Yes. Yeah. The county, Guilford uh, County owns this parcel and this parcel. Another house that has been built fairly recently that uses that gravel road that's going in there. It's, it's really a private gravel road for that property. Does anyone else on this side of the room wish to speak? I'm going to be asking a couple of questions. It's probably more than just a statement. I'm Craig York. Um, I'm a council member for the town of Quincy. And I'm not really asking this Your question. address? Oh, sorry. 805 Water Drive, puts it. Um, we've had a couple of instances where the Jordan Lake rules have come into a discussion for our planning board. And I know that this property is opposite of what we have in Quitsit on the other side of the highway. Um, is the Jordan Lake rules come into play in this particular property? I, I, I know. Go ahead. I know I'm asking questions. Okay. Okay. Certainly, we are very familiar with the BUA restrictions right. that govern this property because of its proximity to Lake Magnetosh, and we've worked a lot with staff trying to make sure that we're, that we're complying with those rules. I don't know if the Jordan Lake rules. I, I know they've been delayed for some period of time, and I know the triad was upset that we're preserving the triangles water supply uh, to our own, own detriment from a development standpoint. But I think there have been, 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 been a couple of three points of contention that have brought yeah. into play some. Um, I just don't still know. affects the watershed and drainage into the Cape Fear River right. basin system. Right. Um, we had property that across the highway was being considered, and the sale was almost completed, and the buyer pulled it because of the Georgia Lake rule. And it was that on the opposite mm -hmm. side? Yeah. From the truck side. Yeah. And I think it's because there's a restriction on petroleum sales in the watershed. Well, and that buyer there are truck stops in there too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, right. But it was going to be more of a storage and camper. I don't know if there were going to be a consideration for any pollutants from the vehicles or anything. Could it be a yeah, you may I, have a point there. That's a good question. Yeah, I, I, I think we had we did not represent those folks, so I, I think we had just heard that at the ether mm -hmm. that that site was under contract. It's on the opposite side of 40, on the west side of mm -hmm. 61. And I didn't mean to ignore you guys. I'm sorry. That's probably right. Um, We're trying to get some information. One other question: the um, buffering that is around Lake McIntosh. How does that affect development? As far as it. Do you have an idea of what the setback for buffering area for the actual lake front is into a development? I can't answer that. It's 200 feet from the lake. Yeah, it's it's not, it's it's the, the, they're trying to find a consistent number. So, Guilford County has it posted. Mm -hmm. there's, there's some buffer mm -hmm. setback, and that's state regulation. Is from You can see on the GIS. Um, it, but what comes funny um, into play is that we have Burlington City, Burlington, <laughs> yeah. the yes. property there, and their zoning, and then it's Guilford County. We're also so in look, the same party together. So right. Different. If you look right here, all of that parcel that's adjacent to the right. um, lake, it, that's all buffer. Okay. And it's non-developable. And then by the, either yeah, the city of Greensboro or, or Guilford County. Or Burlington. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. Is my buzzer going off yet? <laughs> 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Um, last <coughs> week, geological study for the property. Is there one? We did. I think we did. It's underway. Yeah, it's underway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We know there's some rock out there. Did you guys have any questions for me? I have time to spare. You're good, hmm. Mr. York. Thank you so good. much. Good. Cool. Does anyone else on this side of the room have anything to add or questions? Anyone on this side of the room? Okay. 
entertain questions from the commission? Staff recommendation, please. Uh, staff is recommending this rezoning request as it is consistent with the Guilford County master plan as the area, um, as an economic development area. Um, so included in your packet, I believe it's option number one. <clears throat> that being said, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion. Make a motion to approve. <coughs> Sorry, make a motion to recommend approval of the request to rezone property from agriculture to medium industrial limited use MILU. <coughs> the assembly of properties being located on the west side of Highway 61 in Guilford County, just south of the Guilford McIntosh Park and west of Homeview Road, consisting of Guilford County tax identification numbers 106949, 106961, 106966, 106967, 106968, 106970, 106973, 106976, 106977, 225491, and 225492. The motion is based upon the consistency of the proposed rezoning with the Guilford County Comprehensive Plan and that this area is included <coughs> under the Rock Creek area, which identified the conflicts between county and city Greensboro. The request is compatible with the existing commercial and industrial uses in the area. This action is reasonable and in the public interest and in that the Guilford County Comprehensive Plan calls for this area to be an employment center. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Roll call. Chair Black. Approved. Member Beasley. Approved. Member Parker? Approve. Member Rome? Approve. Member Nelson? Opposed. And Member Rayner? In the interest of public information, can we hear Mrs. Uh, Nelson's reason for opposing? Uh, there wasn't. She just had some recommendations. Can, can we read that into the record? I was going to ask if we could read that into the record. Right. So she, she, I'm not sure what you're referring to, sir. The email. Oh, no, that's a different, uh, they're referring to check, uh, member Nelson. Oh. The, the letter was from Kathleen Turner. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. sorry. It's okay. It wasn't for me. No. Okay. And what? There, there was not any discussion uh, relative to specific um, I would draw a request. Okay. But Mr. Chairman, the vote is then 42. Is that correct? 42. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, we'll go to new business. We have no new business. Um, I will uh, ask, I would like to have a recommendation from the board and uh, from someone from the board to make a recommendation to city council to have Amber Wright removed from the uh, City of Burlington Planning and Zoning Commission. As I understand it, she has never been to a meeting. And of course, I don't think we have the power to remove her. So I would like to ask if there's a uh, recommendation of someone would make a recommendation or can I? Okay, then. Okay, go ahead. I move we uh, recommend to the City Council the removal of Amber Wright from this Planning and Zoning Commission for said reason. Okay. Does that need to be in the form of a motion because I'm I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to. No, that's a recommendation. I think it's just a recommendation. Yeah, we're good. You mentioned you don't have the ability. Yeah, we don't have the ability to remove her with the motion. As long as we have a recommendation, thank you very much, Mr. Ryan. That being Which said. Is, Mr. Mayor, is there not, I mean, Mr. Chairman, is there not a vote on the recommendation? Well, it's, it's just I withdrew, a I withdrew the motion. Yeah, it's just a recommendation to the city council. We don't have the power to remove. But I understand that, but is, is it a recommendation from one person or from the board? Well, if that's what I was asking, let's go ahead and vote on it. Let's go ahead and make it a motion. I move. There's a motion to remove Amber Wright from the <coughs> board. Is there a second? I 
I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed? Opposed. Okay. Roll we'll call of the vote, please. Chair Black. Uh, aye. Member Beasley. Opposed. Member Barker. Approved. Member Brown. Approved. Thank you very much. Uh, it's simply a recommendation. Yeah. Is there anything else to come before this board? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. So move. Motion. Okay. All in favor, aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>